Welcome back to Morgan's video blog with writing tips from the pros and of course my own writerly musings. Today I'm here to share with you Short Fiction Expanded, a Discon 3 panel. In December of 2021, I had the opportunity to attend Discon 3. These are my notes. The panelists for the titular panel were AC Wise as moderator, Michael Swanwick, Jenny Ray Rappaport, Howard A. Jones, and Mary Terzillo. The panel description was as follows. Sometimes an excellent short story or novella demands to be fleshed out and republished as a novel. How can you do this successfully and what are some of the pitfalls to avoid? When is the expansion an enhancement and when is it just a marketing necessity? So let's start off by talking about ways short story fiction can really differ from writing novels. So there are plenty of authors out there who write both short stories and novels, often with similar or identical scenes and plots. Some start with a novel and pull out short stories, while many start with a short story, then realize there's a lot more to the characters and the world that they'd like to explore. So let's talk about these differences in the writing process. With short stories, there are no wasted paragraphs. The ending is paramount. Short stories often have a reveal at the end that brings the whole thing together or twists the view of the entire story. Um, short stories are often very zoomed in, focusing on one story arc and very few characters and settings. Often the villain or opponent is less prominent during the short and it's because of the focus. Um, there is also no space to show motivations outside of the main character or characters and there is minimal world building at least on the page. You can imply all you want. Meanwhile, novels often flow better when drafted in one long stretch, um, but the writer has to love the characters and the world to really write that full novel. The main characters often have time to get into plenty of trouble, not just one sticky situation. And there is space, of course, for expansive world building, side characters, and secondary plots. So let's talk about five different approaches you can use for turning a short story or novella into a novel. Um, so uh, Howard A. Jones said that, quote unquote, finding the right way in for your story, it's the real struggle. So here are the five options as a starting point. First, you can use the short story as an opening chapter, but be sure to tightly script the following chapters so they aren't a lit down. If the first one is that punchy, it can stand alone. You gotta make sure that the writing keeps up that quality. <clears throat> Secondly, use the short story as inspiration. Use the characters and plot ideas and expand upon them. A third approach is to split the short story in half or more chunks and fill in the quote unquote off camera parts that were skimmed over. The fourth approach is to write and then combine a series of episodic shorts. And the fifth approach is to take a short story wholesale and just plunk it into the middle of your novel as a side plot or a flashback or a campsite tale, that kind of thing. So <clears throat> let's talk about what changes are acceptable in novelizations of short stories that have already been published. Basically, anything goes. Remember that in the publishing world, usually the rights for a short story, especially in science fiction and fantasy, are gonna revert back to you in like two years. Literary fiction, it might be three. And no one can say you're not writing like the multiverse version of that short story, unless it's a tie-in for an ongoing series. You can change the tense, the point of view character, the themes, the whole plot, the characters. You can change their names, their archetypes, their gender, whatever. It's yours. 
So let's talk about a couple examples of authors that have done this. Uh, now, this is far from a complete list, but these were a few of the suggestions the panelists made of names that might be familiar. First up, Orson Scott Card. With many of his works, but most notably the Ender's Game series, he often uses the formula, protagonist wants something unattainable, achieves it, but then wants something else. I think a lot of us use that formula. Uh, Martha Wells' Murderbot books. Uh, Naomi Novik has done it. N.K. Jemisin. Uh, there are lots of amazing and award-winning authors that have definitely done this. So you're following in their footsteps if you decide to. A uh, side question was, if you're taking a short and turning it into a novel, do you need to plot it more heavily? You can plot or pants just like you do for anything else. Sometimes the story demands it, but if it doesn't work for you, it doesn't work for you. Now, let's get a little more serious. How do you respectfully sell that short story? While having a novel derived from a short story is a great way to reuse ideas, it's not necessarily going to be a selling point to agents and publishers. Plus, the publishing industry is small and you want to make sure that your behavior won't get you blacklisted. So here are some best practices. Number one, don't sell it until after you check in with your editor, especially if it's a tie-in for a series under contract. If you're earlier in the process, don't sell the short story um, while the novel it mirrors is on submission. On submission is what it's called when your agent has sent pages or you has sent pages to a publishing house and you're waiting for that yes or no. Um, Another best practice tip is if you're pulling short story or stories out of a novel, check with the editor or the publisher or your agent first, just to make sure that it's not going to mess up any contracts. And uh, do make sure that you haven't given away the license to the character or the setting. So any tips I missed? Any favorite short story slash novelization pairs you'd like to recommend, let me know in the comments below. As always, thank you for watching and tune in again next week for more writing tips and writerly musings. Bye-bye.